Hello and welcome to November. I told you once we started with the lesson plans, our weeks for this class were going to be really light. And so all I have for you this week is this ed puzzle in which I'm going to go through the rubric. And then I also wanted to let you guys know that I decided to give Sydney and Morgan an extra five points um, for volunteering to go first for teaching each other. And then you're probably watching this after it's already happened, but if not, um, my intention is to bring both Sydney and Morgan up to my desk or I'll come to you and I'm going to give you the results that your peers gave you in terms of what you did really well and what you could maybe improve on. And then I'll go over the rubric with you to let you know how I think you did. And then you can let me know how you think you did and we can kind of go over what we can do better next time or what you really rocked. Um, and I think you guys were both so brave to go first um, and I hope that your um, peers enjoyed being taught to by you because I really enjoyed watching it happen. But let's go through this rubric. And just so you know, as a teacher, a licensed teacher, um, I have a rubric that I'm actually graded on. And so later this year, we'll go over what that looks like in the state of Ohio. And so Mr. McNichol and Ms. Snow, at any time they can come into my classroom or in my Google classroom and observe me teaching. And then they're gonna go through a rubric on what I did well and what I can improve on. And it's really important that I know what they're looking for. And so it's really important that you all know what I'm looking for. And so that's kind of the purpose of me going over this this week and I do apologize to Sydney and Morgan that I did not have this ed puzzle done in advance which as I'm thinking about it that wasn't really fair to them um, and so that's also part of that extra five bonus points but let's take a look at it at the very top the first two are pretty basic and pretty easy to get all five points the first one is time and so as I mentioned it needs to be 15 to 20 minutes if it falls short or if it goes too long um, you're going to be docked points. And that's really important that you're able to learn how to time yourself. And so I do recommend practice um, it. It's something that does come better with experience. But what to you, you might think, oh, this is going to take like 15 minutes. It may only take like three. Um, and it's something that teachers really have to learn how to get down. And so when I first started teaching, um, more so in college when I was student teaching, but I would practice my lectures and see how long they lasted. Um, but you're going to want to make sure that your lesson and your activity is 15 to 20 minutes. Also, some weeks we will only have time for them to be 15 or 20 minutes, so we can't really risk you going over by too much. For all of the lesson plans that you had to submit to me, I required that you had a lesson objective and a lesson standard. And so the second part of this um, rubric is that your lesson meets the standard and objective. So is what you told me um, that you intended for your students to be able to learn? Did it fall in line with the standard? Did you follow that original plan? Next part of the rubric goes specifically in line with the template that I provided with you. So as long as you filled out the template and then you follow that as you teach, you'll get full credit. Very first is the opening or the hook. And so that is when you're introducing the lesson and getting students ready for what they will be learning. So it's not just telling them the topic. It's not just saying today's topic is weather. It's saying today's topic is weather. And by the end of today's class, you're going to be able to tell the difference between the four seasons. Um, you're going into explaining what they're going to be learning. And again, if you follow your lesson plan template, this might be just telling them what the objective is that day. Some of you are going to have fun with it and you have some kind of fun opening songs. Um, and that also will qualify as your hook. A way to lose points on this is to just start teaching without preparing your students for what they're going to be learning. Next, Next is the content mini lesson. And so this is when you're actually teaching. Um, and as I mentioned, we're only doing a 10 to 15 minute lesson. So you're not going to be spending that entire 15 minutes lecturing. Um, because also, if you remember from the past, I told you guys that most students attention span correlates with their age. And so if you're teaching 15 year olds, maybe they can listen for 15 minutes straight, but that's not going to be the bulk of your lesson. So what this part of the rubric is asking is that you're just teaching, that there is a part of there in which you're teaching something. A way to lose points on that would be if you just assume that they already know when you're not actually teaching them anything. Next is going to be the guided practice or independent practice. And so this is giving um, time for the students to practice what they've learned and also explaining what you want them to do. And so within each of your lessons, you need to have some sort of um, guided practice, whether it be by themselves or with they do it with small group, but you need to have students um, demonstrating that they're learning something. A way to lose points on that is if you don't plan, give, um, if you're not letting the students practice anything that they've learned. Next is the closer or the sinker. And so what I really don't want is for you to say, okay, I'm done. Um, 
you need to do something to let the students know, wrap it up, let them know that class have, has ended. And so you're going to have a clear acknowledgement of what they learned. Um, you might say, remember in the beginning of class, I told you all that we were going to discuss the four seasons. Well, look, now you know them. Can anyone tell me what they are? And so you're just kind of wrapping it up nicely. Um, a way to lose that is if I can't tell that class has ended, you're going to lose some points. Or if you look at me and say, that's all I got, you're going to lose points. I need you to, and you've all planned it in your lesson plan template. So bring that up to the front with you. If you need to bring your lesson plan template to the front while you're teaching and look at it, then do so. I do that still to this day when I'm teaching in front of the class. Um, I will often have a piece of paper with some things that I want to make sure I knock off. And so for you guys, it might be, don't forget to end class with a closing or a sinker. Okay, the last two parts of this rubric I think are the easiest to ace. It's professionalism and preparedness. And so for professionalism on the rubric, I have it saying that it's maintained throughout the entire lesson. And it's as simple as that. When you're up there, you're a teacher. You're not a teaching career student. You are a teacher. Um, you are Miss and then your last name. And so while you're up there, I want you to act like a student. I have in the past had teaching career students who go, or sorry, act like a teacher. I've had students go to the front of the classroom and say, I don't feel like doing this. Or, oh my God, guys, let me tell you what happened in fifth period. No, you're the teacher while you're up there. So once you tell me you're starting, you're the teacher. Remain professional. That's also why um, in class last week, I asked you guys as students, um, you could have a little bit of fun with it, but don't be... Um, so kid-like that you are challenging um, your peers in which that they break professionalism. And so we will talk about classroom management and we will do some role play with classroom management. Now's not the time though. So when you're up there, you're the teacher and you need to act that way. Um, and I think Sydney and Morgan both did an excellent job last week in doing that. So great job. Let's keep it up. And then the last part of this rubric is professional or is preparedness. And so um, on the rubric, it says you were prepared for the lesson in advance. You had materials, you had lesson steps. And so for the most part, if you got um, full credit on the lesson plan that you turned into me a few weeks ago, and then all the materials that you intended on bringing you show to me that Monday morning, um, then you're good to go. You should get all of this. And so it's just a matter of when you come to class that day, all of your materials are prepared. You follow along the lesson template. Um, that's preparedness for you. And that's going to get you the full credit. A way to lose points in that is if you, that Monday, you don't have anything ready or the day that you're supposed to teach, um, you don't have your lesson plan or you forgot something, then that's going to go against your preparedness. So I'm actually going to post this rubric um, with the Ed Puzzle, and I do recommend before you teach, um, I know we don't have anyone teaching again until next week, but before you teach, take a look at the rubric and prepare yourself. So before you're teaching, you know, you're going to know what I'm looking for to grade you as you teach. I also wanted to take a minute to talk about the student feedback. Um, some of you gave some really great feedback and I thank you and Morgan and Sydney are gonna thank you and in the future, you're gonna thank each other for this. Um, but I really want you to think about what you are saying about your peers. And so I did have a few of you who um, the question says, do you feel as though the activity or assignment during the lesson allowed you as a student to demonstrate what you had or had not learned, explain. Um, and so I had a few of you just say yes. Um, but explain, go into detail. You are going to really appreciate seeing that feedback after you teach. I love seeing that feedback from my administrators um, after I teach. I like to hear both the negative and positive because it's something that keeps me going. It's something that the next time I teach, I'm remembering those words that they gave me. Okay, one of the last things I want to talk about on this rubric is the difference between a five and a four in some of these categories. And admittedly, this first round of you guys teaching, um, I'm going to be a softy and give you that five versus a four in most cases because we haven't had a chance to talk about it. But let me show you in content mini lesson, for example, the difference between a five and a four. So under a five, it says that you um, use the content mini lesson with a variety of methods. And then four, it says it's just used to instruct and teach students. And so what I'm looking for is you to become, go above and beyond. So you are finding a way to do a variety of ways of, of teaching. Um, the other one, if we wanna take a look at is planned assessments. So they were appropriate and used effectively as opposed to a four where assessments were just used. And so in that case, I would be looking Okay, yeah, you used an assessment. That's a four. But did you actually gauge the student learning with your assessment? 
And again, this round of teaching, I'm going to give you guys that five over that four for a lot of these because we haven't spent a lot of time going point by point. Um, but in the future, what we might do is if we spend a few weeks specifically on assessments or specifically on content lesson, that's when I'm going to grade you a little bit more harder um, when you do uh, deliver your lesson. Let's make it a great month.